right in here I ran that piece down that way I know where the overlap is it just gives you something to bite I'm prying against tape not paint because there's three stages of paint on this there's the black the silver and then what we leave behind is just going to be chrome so this plate was rough and it had pits but it has been re-chromed I guess there's probably a bunch of ways to do this. This is just how I do it. Make sure you don't drop the excess back into that paint. I'm pulling it with the paint a little bit wet. And uh, so what I did is I put a touch because it's like a bright chrome. Once it was taped, I gave it a very minor, a very minor uh, rub with a scotch bright, which, you know, it's pretty hard to get into. And some guys say, well, you just throw any paint in there and it'll stay because it's in there. But the reality is uh, you can never count on that. So I put a little bit of this stuff on. It's a bit of a self-etch. Now, when I say I put a little bit on, when that's all taped, just enough that you see it fade the chrome out. And all it does is you're not even really putting primer on, but enough of the acid in the, uh, in the etch primer... Um, Let's see. But yeah, so basically just enough to etch it a wee little bit, and it kind of gives it a sanded rough look. And then basically I throw the red paint on. As I peel this off, it's still a little wet. So if there's any little gray edge, and there shouldn't be, because we didn't put enough primer on to create that edge. But, you know, you get pretty, uh, pretty close. And again, this isn't a perfect panel. Like if I catch the light, you can see pitting in it. But these panels are getting hard to get. I'm kind of surprised he even re-chromed this piece, but, you know, he had it pitting aside. It was in good shape, so he re-chromed it. And if you look at it from the top, the pitting doesn't actually show very much. So what I'm showing you right now, of course, I'm upside down, but that's just how it's sitting on the bench. But the pitting doesn't look too bad. Where for some reason, when I look at it from the bottom, the pitting looks horrible. It's almost backwards of what you think it would do. But here's how it sits on the car, and this is what you see. So that's going to look really sharp when we put it on the back of the car. And the reason for the black and the silver, as well as the red, keep in mind the grill's been in storage and it's dusty, but there's your, your light gray and your red and the black. And then there's chrome, and even these, like this is uh, black, chrome, and then in here is supposed to be the light gray. These ones are a little faded, but he likes the car the way it is, and he said just restore the back one to match the front. He goes, the front should be refreshed. These bumpers are, they're pretty nice, but they have a, uh, the front one's not bad. You could probably polish that out really, really nice. But the back one, you know, you have a little bit of, See the little little bit of pitting in there, and he's going to polish some of that out and whatnot, but this is a driver, and again, everyone says, you should do this, you should do that, and I understand where that's coming from. But yeah, this was a junker that uh, should have never, ever went back on the road. This runs and drives. The alignment shows that it's straight. This is a car that passed safety before he even brought it to me, so he did a lot of steel work to this car. Um, but there was a lot of work that was rough on the outside. So, right, look at our door gaps. Everything flows together. And again, this is a single stage, uh, what, three, four coats? Yeah, because we did a ground coat and three coats of yellow. Um, that's something I'd have to explain. But anyways, what you're seeing is not in the paint down there. That's actually a reflection of these tools. So even though it's yellow, it's reflective. This is a cheap single stage urethane. Looks pretty nice. You could easily wet sand and cut and buff this car. We're not going to. This is literally going out the way it is. This is a driver. Again, this is something that you can jump in on the weekends. 
and take the kids to the local car show or the fair, right? If somebody puts a little scuff on it walking by, you know, you might be a little bit disappointed, but you're not going to lose your freaking mind because this isn't a $30,000 paint job. This is, well, cheap. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, it's nice and straight. Things are nice and flat. The body lines, the body gaps are really, really good. The one up uh, behind the hood's a little bit on the big side, but whoever did the quarters, I mean, I corrected what I could, but there's still a little bit ahead. So if everything pushes ahead, you know, you might end up with something like this. Now, again, this car frame rails, like it, it had a lot of stuff done. But yeah, everything flows really nice. Look how sharp those body lines look, even in the yellow. We had to do a lot of work to get them nice because they were crap and they were kind of round in the middle and pointy on the ends, which is usually the opposite of how they look. Um, that, that blue in there is a vinyl tape. I put it in as like a bit of a gasket so it doesn't rub direct on the paint. I'm going to take this one out and see what happened here. Now, I made this to fit and it didn't at all. But this piece here, when you put it in, it sandwiches. And I guess where the holes are, when you tighten it, it pulls it over. So I'm going to let that sit for a bit. It's still fresh, like a day old. But I'm going to take that back apart, hone out those four holes, just so that that can move over a little bit to allow that to realign. But other than that, trunk lid opens and closes and fits nice. You know, that side's tight, but the whole thing I'll actually move out to, to make it look like the other side. But yeah, it's a fairly straight car considering what it was. And most of this car, uh, one door was reskinned, the other door was off of another project that was left over. It might have come with the car. I think he said one door came with the car. The fenders are rejected parts 168, 169 front fender. Uh, this was all banged up and dinged up, and the bottom was rotten. He fixed it, but it was kind of wavy, so we blocked that all out. If you look down, like it's it's pretty straight and smooth. And I mean, it's hard to tell, but the reflections really show that. This isn't a perfect job by no means, but uh, you know, you can find a little, right about here, there's a little bit of a, can we catch it in the camera? Yeah, it's pretty minor, so we're not gonna be able to catch it. I can barely catch it by eye. There's one little, little dip there, which almost looks like more of a dip in the paint, but I know it's in the panel. But this trunk lid, I'm pretty proud of the trunk lid because it, it's pretty smooth and glassy. And uh, if you go back and check out the videos, you'll see that this trunk lid was just a mess. It was all wobbly and it had, here and here there was dents that came up from where the hinge bars go into the trunk and get bolted in. Someone basically just threw the lid on with no bolts and slammed her shut. And, you know, they probably had uh, ratchet straps holding it down or whatever. But yeah, so it had these crazy dents upward. So I massaged those back in. And uh, then we realized the whole trunk was just wavy everywhere. So we blocked that out. And then there's not a lot of fill. Like there's a skim coat. Like if you chip this somewhere, you can put a touch up of paint on it and buff it away. The only thing we didn't fix on the trunk, um, these corners sit just a touch high. And I've noticed a lot of these cars, that seems to be a bit of a thing. But if you look at the back where it meets the package tray, you kind of see that the package tray is a little higher than the trunk in the middle. So the trunk could have been forced bent, but a lot of work was done. And then I finished off the work. So I didn't want to start playing with that and trying to rebend it. Again, daily driver, a lot of the trim on this car is half decent, but there's a few dings and whatnot. Again, all leftover parts from a, uh, a nice restoration. So this is, this is definitely, I mean, the hood level and the fender level's nice. The gaps are fair. For something you can drive down the road, this is a pretty nice car. I'm going to tilt you sideways, but you can see where the body line runs down the car and down the fender, and it all matches nice and true. That took a lot of work. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this car.
It's not perfect, but it's definitely, uh, look, here's the deal. This is a $500 junker with a title. Uh, now it's a car that can go down the road.